Welcome to E-Online, your guide to knowing and learning about purposive communication and English as a foreign or second language. This is Lesson 3, Communication and Technology. About communication and its effect and purpose in times of digital age, the impact of communication on the current society we are living in, the role of social media in today's generation and utilize it purposively. And also, communication and technology registers based on audience and context. First, let us talk about how you can further appreciate the impact of communication on society and the world. You were born in the digital age where the use of gadget to communicate is almost an essential part of your daily living. When you were growing up, you may have been immediately exposed to children's show, so that you could learn about educational ideas at your age. Through technology, we can now find out what is happening outside our house, even, reaching the news outside our country. The communication that was built by this generation, became the spotlight of others, to find what is wrong about it. We cannot really deny the fact that, communication in times of digital native continuously, evolves and adjusts the way people need it. If you want to think more about it, it was far different from now, not only for personal use but also, for countries' effectiveness of having accessibility to information, which is one of the most basic rights, a citizen should have. We cannot deny the fact that our generation today became digitally connected world. Everything became instant, and we are wanting everything instantly. Most of us get easily bored when mobile games or downloading is interrupted by sudden lost, or intermittent connection. In short, digital connectivity has already been injected into our daily routine. Today's communication is characterized by constancy of connectivity, convergence, and interactivity. Connectivity. This occurs through the digital tools that we use such as cellular phones, smartphones, tablets, and computers without giving much effort to do it or even through sending text messages or emailing. Convergence. As it improves consistently in using of technology, this characteristic possibly happens through face-to-face -face communication. Here, if you were able to see physical appearance of another person instantly, you are conversing through smartphones, or what they are currently doing. The examples of it are communication through video calls, and other forms of face-to-face -face system or application. Interactivity. This may happen if the person on the other face-to-face -face system can instantly interact to you with the demand you are asking. There is an instant participation going on. It can be through online classroom or quizzes, or fun games on the internet. Let us take a look at the differences between the first and the second media age. As you can see, the first media age is more focused on the broadcast while interactivity, is the focus of the second media age. There is a usual one-way communication in the first media age, while two-way communication is being encouraged in the second media age. In your opinion, in which media age do you belong to? Do you like it? Use of social media platforms. Social media refers to the means of digital interactions that neglect the hindrances of time and space, of two communicators, with the use of web-based, or mobile technologies that allow you to have an access to some applications, that are used extensively, for the purpose of communication, according to Barua in 2012, such as Facebook, Twitter, MySpace, Tumblr, Instagram, Snapchat and many more. Now, let us analyze the differences between the vintage and the modern social media. What did you notice? Abuse of social media, can get you to trouble. Many people are using social media, as their outlet of rage and resentment, and there is nothing wrong about it. But, when your words start to hurt other people, and the fact that the language element of social media, is only but words and images, it causes other people to have different interpretation of, how you deliver your thought. So, always be mindful of the words you are going to post, or say on your video or shoutouts. The users of social media are random individuals that you may perhaps know as critics, writers, scholars, like-minded persons, experts, or decision makers. We may not know, who can read and see our message or post, but one thing is for sure. That we retrieve and build messages, that can be read all around the world, if you wish to. Now, using the chart of social media presence, in which frequency of social media use do you think do you belong to? 
low, medium, or high. Memes. Today, had entered our social media world. There would be no day that you couldn't see any memes, whenever you swipe on your screen. They emerge everywhere, not only on one social media, but all of it. Memes are also described as the shared nuggets of cultural currency. These quick edited pictures of showing, both relevant and funny pictures, had become an important way and mechanism to create meanings that predate the internet according to Suarez in 2018. But now, not only to a particular public post, memes are also being used as part of creative comment culture. Unfortunately, not all memes are successful. Some memes have failed to be replicated, and that was because, memes have three properties, by which, they evolve and exist. If you want to use memes to amplify your thoughts and views in the digital world, try to consider the following elements, before making one of your own. Intertextuality. This property, will let you create a meme, with reference to the other memes, mashing up photo, with historical, or famous reference with a text, as a message that you want to communicate. Indexicality is a property, that can be used to comment on different situations. Having one image that can be used to different message, and could give you same feeling and reaction visually. Finally, templatability is a property wherein, the image gives enough space, to add new content, for other people who wish to create another meme. In 2020, Geppeler and his co-authors, have emphasized that, technology has a great impact on business. And sir, let us take a look at the following functions of technology, for business presentation purposes. Easy product launch. Instead of doing door-to-door -door marketing for your product or any announcement you need to advertise, email subscriptions, and use of social media can be enough to inform the public about the business you have. And, it is less costly than the traditional door-to-door -door marketing. Seminars and announcements. Through online post advertisements, people on social media will know about your issues, or events that you want to advertise in just one click. Blog movie reviews. Because films also have a great role, of shaping our culture and behavior, reviews and other blogs about films, can be helpful tools to market a certain movie. Those are what we call teasers and synopses. Video lecture. These are all accessible via internet, in just one click, you may seek the video lecture, you are looking for free, this is a good sample of a tool, to know how good you can explain the lesson or, the topic you are reporting. Here are some tips, that can make the design of your visual presentation successful. First, the design of the slides must be simple even in colors. Also, use sans serif font, Arial, or any font, that is easier to read from a distance. Use a high contrast color scheme. Black on white or yellow on black. Using navy blue on a black background, could make the texts almost invisible. Each slide must have one main point, or message only. All headings must be also be uniquely exposed. Use bullet points, instead of full sentences. Use only graphs, if you are explaining and presenting complex information. Tables and charts are good, when presenting the statistical data of a certain topic. Avoid putting fancy images like Disney or cartoon characters if they have nothing to do with the topic. As a whole, avoid information overload in your presentation. Remember that your aim, is to explain the concepts deeper, and not to read, what's already on the slides of your presentation. Otherwise, your presentation will just be a reading class. Your visual support material, will be your friend, throughout your oral presentation, it can assure your success, and great deployment of information you are presenting to your audience. It can be your keywords or cues, whenever you forget something along the way. And, it makes you more professional and ready looking, standing on the podium, and communicating with your audience, with the help of the technology. This is the end, of lesson 3. For your task. Task 1. Based on the lecture, how did the use of technology evolve based on its purpose and the way today's users use it? Be able to explain this, in not less than 5, but not more than 10 sentences. Task 2. Be able to analyze the following cases, and, be able to explain the problem, that exist, and propose solutions to the problems, using the ideas that you have learned from this lecture. Your answer shall be relevant to the following cases. Case 1. When Emmett's mom sent him a message via phone, he found it so funny, and so he typed lol. His mom thought, that this is an insulting response. 
his mom got mad, and, he was shocked why was that her reaction. Case 2. During her presentation, Josephine noticed that, most of her classmates are yawning and, using their phones. She continued reading exactly what's in the slides, and one by one, they started asking the instructor for the permission, to go to the restroom. What could be the reason for this behavior and, what should Josephine do next time when preparing her presentatio? Task 3. Be able to watch Shirley Turkle's TED talk entitled, Connected but Alone, as shown in the screenshot in the slide. In a three-paragraph essay, be able to explain the following using the format. Paragraph 1. What is the talk all about? Be able to summarize it in not less than five sentences. Paragraph 2. Based on the talk, how does technology affect today's relationship and the way people deal with each other? How can we maximize the purpose of technology, to address the communication gap, that grows in today's society? Paragraph 3. What is the main lesson that the speaker tries to teach us? How can you apply this as a student, and a future professional?